Oh. Or, <laughs> it's the white oh. cow? Yeah, we actually... It's delightfully the devilish. <laughs> hey, yeah, I it's popped up. Shit. Oh, wait. Now I do. It's happening. Oh, I have all my fingers. That's it. I just wanted to brag about that. Oh, man, I got them, too. <laughs> yeah, now I'm looking at your fingers. <laughs> They don't know. So they're chasing him away. It's a very musical episode of Is It Kino? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, it's about to get even more musical, you fucks. <laughs> it is. Why is that? Actually, what are we, we doing? First? Do you not want to be buried in a pet cemetery? Yeah. Is that what you're say saying? Um, <laughs> that. It's pretty catchy. <laughs> Not in my fucking head. Fuck this movie. <laughs> All right, we should try. Oh, to, no. We should try to talk a little bit more uh, one at a time because Google Hangouts oh. is not being super cool. Oh, oh my what's it do? It's uh, it's hard to understand a little bit when there's mm. a you know. Uh, I wish Discord would work. But what are you gonna do? Yeah. Well, I guess we'll just have to get adjusted to this latency. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess I interrupt sometimes. It's hard. Bad latency. Yeah. Let's let's jump into Discord just for one more try, because I, I, I don't know. You think it'll have changed? Instantly. Okay. Um, do, do I sound any better on Discord? Sound fine to me Probably, right now. Yeah. So it'll probably fuck up in like 10 minutes. I was going to say, it takes a couple seconds for it to really show its <laughs> colors. Yeah. He might already be starting. Keep talking, monkey. Uh, <laughs> even flow. Uh, Aragash, thank you for subscribing. Welcome aboard. Sounds, sounds fine to me so far. All right. I'm sure it'll sound fine on the stream, but if it fucks up, it'll just be for you guys. Yeah. It'll be torture. That's right, mm. folks. We're doing two episodes of the Is It Kino program today. Very generous men we are. Good morning mm -hmm. to everybody at, at 1.16 p.m. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Double feature. Ooh. That's right. Wait, do you say 6.30? Uh, no, I did not say your time code. <laughs> it's because that would have been confusing. <laughs> Double feature. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> e Rich has a good point. <laughs> what? <laughs> it is a science fiction double feature. Mm hmm. Science fiction, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll allow it. Superhero fiction. <laughs> Wait, no, I guess I guess it's more fantasy horror, right? Hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, we got it. We got a handful of people here. Should we just get started? I don't really give a fuck. Let's do it. Okay, folks, we're recording a podcast. Uh, you know the drill. We're gonna ignore the chat for a little, little bit. Do Good a cook. podcast. Uh, hopefully, our audio levels sound about the same. They they look about accurate to me. I don't know. Nobody's complained yet. Eat. In all this time, they had to complain <laughs> about yeah, singing. They, they've had so much time to complain. <laughs> yeah, that you, makes us like it. Um. Florian, let me ask you a question. You ever, uh, you ever sleep on your dick weird and you wake up and your dick hurts? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, me neither. I was just asking hypothetically. <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I, I have done that with my eye. Sometimes my eye what? hurts when I get up. Like, I do it with my ear happen? a lot. <laughs> my fucking ear hurts so much when I wake up sometimes. Because you sleep oh, on I it? Think... I guess. Do oh, you have wow. trouble hearing? No, <laughs> fuck you, Florian. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> My actual ear hurts. I can't not hear. Oh, right. Florian needs a new it. pair of shoes, people. <laughs> By the Binding of Isaac on the Switch, fuck, people. Monkey. Florian Stop needs that. some more corn pizza, folks. <laughs> Get on board. I'm gonna keep that joke going until Florian gets genuinely angry and wants to quit the show. And he leaves the show. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just yeah. me. I find again, I never understood why everyone ends up betraying you, but I understand now. <laughs> I'll have to do a new contest called uh, Europe's Next Top Florian, where we have to find your replacement. <laughs> oh no. It should what be me doing do? a Florian impression. <laughs> you're going to come then... back to the show just to do that? Yeah. <laughs> as long as you have somebody else's name, it's okay. 
Yeah, yeah right. Beavers. Okay, I'm gonna put on another oh, shirt. My. I'm getting cold. BRB I created fam. the binding BRB. of Isaac. Entertain the masses. <laughs> I love the Hobbit movies. Oh my god, <laughs> so very much. Damn, it's almost like listening to a mirror. Amazing. Wow, yeah, yeah. Fucking millionaire <laughs> Florian needs new windshield wipers. Florian needs more windshield wipers, folks. That's just how it's gonna work. He's gonna fucking sell you Binding of Isaac Part 2. There you go. Well, you too, Judas. Binding of... Uh, what What other biblical characters? Hey, you guys better not be saying <laughs> um, the N-word in here. Oh yeah, I'll just get you banned off this. Then you won't have to replace me. Perfect. And then I won't have to make fun <laughs> of your corn pizza ever again. Yeah, you'll not be making fun anywhere on the internet. <laughs> Florian needs the more corn trail. pizza, folks! <laughs> <laughs> Florian will be the only one left. He'll do it alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my April Fool's Day joke. I don't know if you yep. saw it. I said that I got kicked out of Izzy oh. Kino. That oh, you guys outvoted me. And then you're going to leave at the end of the month anyway. So it's just going to be Florian. <laughs> it's just going to be Florian. going to be doing it on my channel. <laughs> Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Yeah, that was a pretty good video. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you guys ready to get started? We're gonna do yeah. two separate episodes today, folks. Or do you guys want to do uh, both these movies in one big episode, but then we can't really... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to... Yeah. yeah, let's just do two episodes. Two episodes. Okay, I'll get it started, folks. Which one are we doing first? Shazam. Shazam! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite movie review podcast. That's right. Is it keen? Oh, I want to record. Never mind. Say it. Okay, I'm going to start over. I, I forgot to record on OBS. Okay, here we go. <laughs> nice. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite movie review podcast. That's right, the one and only Is It Kino? I'm your host, Mumpke Johnson, joined as always by Florian Himsel and special guest star, E. Rich McCoy. We're all here, the, the good old Kino trio. We're here, no, no, we're queer, deal support. with it. <laughs> Uh, I am here. It's Erich. I am a large man with the mind of a small boy. <laughs> well, that explains wow. your love for all of the Star Wars movies. <laughs> they appeal to the large and the in charge. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about space shit. We're here to talk here. about literal Cut. cape shit. Chuck? Mm. We're you here to talk about right? a little movie I like to call... Super Chuck. Uh, um, <laughs> upgrade of the intersect. Because we saw a little <laughs> we saw a new DC movie. Uh, hey folks, let me say this is a podcast where we review movies. Uh and we're reviewing the new Shazam movie. <laughs> Florian, what did you think of Shazam? Wow, you sounding like you're really entertained by the idea of Shazam. It's just, as soon as fucking Everidge said cut or Chuck, I knew we were going off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I haven't even had time to watch Chuck. Oh no. <laughs> it's a long show. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll probably just start with one episode. Uh, yeah, so Shazam, it's... it's good, I guess. I mean, <laughs> DC... Wow, racing review. DC has, review. DC good, has I guess. a lot... To catch up to it's never gonna be as good as Marvel it's it's so weird I guess I say that a lot but DC should be better than Marvel why is DC worse than Marvel oh, whatever I guess it's it's good for a DC movie it's bad for a Marvel movie well let me ask you this before we get Erich's take Florian if, if you're saying this is uh not as good as Marvel what would you say was better Shazam or Captain Marvel <laughs> the, the two most Captain recent Marvel films. or Captain Marvel right I think they're, they're pretty equal Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, E. Rich, let's hear the correct opinion. I I was literally drinking, <laughs> and I had the perfect place to do a spit take there <laughs> yeah. when he said they're about the same. Yeah, I uh, okay. <laughs> I I feel similarly, but perhaps for different reasons. E. Rich, I don't know. So this movie, where a uh, boy in the in the body of a man, uh, we've a all man been there. The, the <laughs> mind of a We've all been inside the body of a big man. <laughs> And um, he suddenly gains amazing abilities to perform uh, uh, actions well outside of his normal uh, ability range, the show Chuck. Um, <laughs> wow. I really, 
I really <laughs> Chuck was never a small it. boy. He was, he was like six foot five. He's he's a nerd though. He's a man child, right? Oh, uh, I mean, he, he likes to play Guitar Hero. I don't know how nerdy he is. I don't know. Yeah, that's a video game. He's a fucking child. <laughs> um, so I, I watched the first episode of Chuck, and <laughs> I thought it was yeah. uh, pretty good. It's really good. Uh, Zachary oh, Levi was very very fun uh, in the lead role. Chuck. If you want to watch about uh, talk about fucking Chuck, I'll talk about Chuck. I rewatched the series earlier this year. So the entire wow. series uh, isn't it like six or seven seasons. Yeah, I, I I stopped about four and a half seasons in because it oh. really oh. it really loses its charm. Yeah, <laughs> the, that's uh, most shows. The, the power creep on Chuck was very unfortunate. I liked it better when Ooh. he was like the, you know, he's like a fish out of water doing all these CIA missions, but he's just a, a scared nerd. And then, yeah. like, the, the Intersect will give him, like, one moment of brilliance every episode. But then it's like the Intersect gives him uh, karate powers and shit in later seasons. Uh -huh. And it's just like, oh, now he's a full-fledged super spy. This isn't Chuck anymore. It's just generic <laughs> uh, spies who can do anything uh, episode 500. It's, it, I didn't like it at the end. Do they, wow. ever, do they ever switch it around where instead of him being a nerd most of the time, he's instead a spy most of the time, and he's trying to do his regular job, but he acts like a spy? Uh, I mean, it's it's sort of like a, the classic superhero setup where he has to uh -huh. he has these two lives and he has to keep them separate, but that only causes you know pain and turmoil with his friends and family because he he can't reveal right. his secret identity as a super spy. So it's like his sister wants to know, oh, why were you late to my wedding, Chuck? What happened? And he's, and he's like, oh, oh, mm -hmm. uh, I had to go. With the nerd hurt. I had to go fix the computer. Oh, oh. And she's like, really? You you value Best Buy more than your own sister? And he's like, well, actually, I was stopping a nuclear bomb from destroying the fucking <laughs> city but i can't say mm -hmm. that um so i, I liked all that Poor kind of guy. stuff in chuck but yeah sounds pretty good he, he's the classic uh, spider-man problem chuck is a modern yeah, day right. spider-man holy great power shit. comes great responsibility that's right in case you don't know chuck is an nbc show from 2008 starring <laughs> the star of shazam zachary levi all right so i did that's actually see shazam as well did you um, actually watch some of chuck or was that a bit that was a bit. I, I did probably in two thousand what six or seven watch an, a single episode of Chuck probably. <laughs> Not impressed. <laughs> it wow. was fine. Um, all right, so Shazam, <laughs> guys, going into this movie, I didn't understand why the fuck DC was bothering with the Captain Marvel Shazam movie because who the fuck Captain cares Marvel. about Shazam? Who gives a shit? No, fuck you, Florian. It was originally Captain Marvel. It was put out by Fawcett Comics. Fawcett what? Comics got bought by DC Comics, and they got the rights to the Captain Marvel character. So a lot of the things you're seeing in this movie did not originally come from DC Comics. They were bought by DC Comics. But well, uh, what, are yeah, you so How, what did they buy? I don't the understand. character, all of the situations, all that shit. What character? Captain Marvel. We're talking about Shazam. Captain Marvel. <laughs> Shazam was originally <laughs> called Captain Sh Marvel. Shazam was originally Captain Marvel, but then rights <laughs> the issues fuck happened. Is this? Why are you trolling us? What the fuck? Are you it, no, about? Florin, you don't know this. That's it's true. That's why we compare this to Captain Marvel because they both had the yeah. same name. Wow. DC <laughs> and Marvel both had a character named Captain Marvel. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Oh God. Um. So it's not this a movie, joke. I, I didn't understand why they were bothering doing this because you've got all of these Justice League characters to get through, and there are much bigger, more interesting characters to get to than Shazam. Uh... But I think. More interesting? What's yeah. more interesting than the orphan little boy who gets the powers well, of Chuck? That was added later on. They didn't really play up the whole in in his uh, in his grown up adult uh, body. He acted like a child. That was a new thing for the comics that happened about ten years ago or so. Oh, okay. So it wasn't always that. It was most of the time when he became a superhero, he basically acted like any other fucking Superman character. Oh, that's lame um, as hell that he doesn't have the same yeah, no, no, brain. No. But the reason you do something like this is that you can easily make like a more kid-friendly superhero movie uh, because you have the kid in the body of, of a superhero, and that's inherently fun because he gets to do all the testing out your power shit that most superhero movies only do in their first movie, and then kind of very quickly just they don't give a shit anymore. But most of the time when they're doing that, a lot of that wonder is kind of stripped out after a certain point. So what I thought this movie was super good at was bringing back that I love having powers. I don't know what I can do also. Like Iron Man is building all the shit into his armor and stuff. So he knows how things are going to work. And you get some good stuff with him testing it out in the first movie. But they largely just throw that away. 
in the next couple movies. So in Shazam, he doesn't know what the fuck he can do. So it's always a mystery as to what's going to happen. And then at the very end of the movie, they played that a super fun way that I knew was going to happen, but I kind of forgot. So it was a nice little twist when uh, things went completely insane. I think that David F. Sandberg, who directed this movie, he's a horror director, and that shows at times in this movie. I think it can be genuinely scary and kind of off-putting. So if you're a very small child, uh, you <laughs> might be very, very afraid of parts of this movie. But I thought it was really good. I thought it was great. So so yes. when, when you said you were going to do a spit take, it was because you couldn't believe Florian would say this movie was on par with Captain yeah. Marvel. Yeah, this is way fucking better than Captain Marvel. It was that good to you, Jesus. Yes! Yeah, Florian, you actually this like. One... Go ahead. You actually, I actually like, like how what? he's constantly like naming his powers and describing it. It's like, oh, I've got lightning powers. I got super speed. Mm. I'm gonna level up my stats. I'm gonna have all these super what powers. What the Lord fuck? Speak. Were you never? Were you never a child, Florian? Did <laughs> no, you just I don't come think out was. of your mama's vagina, completely fully grown, <laughs> eating corn yes. pizza, eating corn pizza? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, fully formed. No need for any childishness. I think. There's, I think what we're no time. We're learning that Florian hates the sense of childlike wonder. He only wants everything <laughs> to be adults, like a Batman v Superman, just two grown men punching each other. Once you get a child in there, he, he can't relate anymore, folks. Let, let's see how he reacts to this. Florian, my mom's name is Martha. No, <laughs> Martha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now how yeah, do you react to this? Batman, My name is Zapped in America. <laughs> Ooh, childlike wonder, son. <laughs> <laughs> fuck kids. I'm, my name's Florian, and my motto is fuck kids. Take that for what you will. Florian himself. That, that, is, that is not my motto. Why, why must you make everyone into a pedophile? What the hell? Whoa! Pedophile? I didn't mean it like Too that. Far. What, what are you exactly. talking about, Florian, you sick fuck? <laughs> Florian, you're canceled. You've been canceled. Hashtag, I'm canceled. Hashtag binding of Isaac is canceled. I'm sure Shut Edmund down. would love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay here's a real opinion on uh on uh, oh, captain no. shazam oh, no. uh it was uh a delightful family romp that uh, mm -hmm. had me grinning ear to ear in the theater until about <gasps> an, an hour into the imax film uh. <laughs> the imax movie just stopped playing and uh. we, and the whole theater was sitting in the complete darkness like wait what the fuck Whoa. is going on and uh it took about 25 minutes for them to get the movie playing again jesus christ so i was just on snapchat and on discord telling everybody hey i'm, I'm sitting in a, a full completely dark <laughs> imax theater and of course, mm -hmm. uh, they don't change their schedule. So I'm seeing the four o'clock premiere. We, we we finally got out of there at like seven twenty when the IMAX seven o'clock showing was supposed to begin at seven. Of course, oh my God. so there's like a long line of angry people staring at us oh. as we walk out of the theater. Like it's our fucking fault that the theater malfunctioned this. and those retards didn't know how to fix that shit in a timely manner. Right. So, is uh, this the power of the A list? Yeah, the power of the AMC A list. If you uh, <laughs> if you ever want to stalk me and also see movies at a shitty theater that doesn't know how to run their IMAX, go to South Point Seventeen <laughs> here in uh, around in North Carolina. I don't know what city it's in, but it's near Raleigh. If you if you want your IMAX experience to fuck up half of the time, go to that theater. It's also <laughs> the biggest, nicest IMAX theater in the tri-state area, as far oh, as wow. I'm concerned. And they still don't have it working. This is the theater I'm going to when I see Avengers Endgame. If the if the IMAX malfunctions and turns off an hour into Endgame, there there were the the OJ riots, the uh, all the fucking riots are going to seem like jokes. Yeah. The Marvel fans exactly. are going to burn down the theater. There will right. be mayhem and carnage oh, like no other. Forget Venom 2. You want carnage, you go see what happens at this fucking movie theater. It'll be end game for that movie theater. Oh, it'll be end game for anybody living within a ten mile radius. We're going to. Uh, it'll be like it'll be the, the purge times a million. Nobody will survive our rage. I'm gonna fucking snap and and burn up half of the people I see. Turn them into Damn. goddamn ashes and dust. Holy shit. shit. So yeah, they, they they got Shazam playing again 25 minutes later, and we had to rewatch like 10 minutes of the movie because I guess the um, projector yeah. guy didn't know. That where really we, takes you out of it too. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't know where we left off, so we just clicked on a random fucking could, part. 
Damn. Yeah, you, you probably assumed it just stopped 10 minutes ago, that's why. Damn. Oh, wait, no. What then a you dipshit. Would see less of it. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, no, uh, the... I thought the movie was really fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. For ironic Kino reasons, I like Batman versus Superman more. But otherwise, I think it's the <laughs> best. It's the best DC, DC. movie in the DC mm -hmm. EU thus far. Right. I think it's a step in yeah, the that... right direction, and I'll talk now, about why soon. Ironic. Did, do you not actually like Batman v Superman? Oh, I love it, but I love it for its flaws. Is the thing this right. movie? I love genuinely. Oh. But, so, monkey. Okay. I would guess you that think makes... they? Do you think they should keep going with this kind of tone for their future movies? Well, here's how I want to compare it to the Marvel movies. I think mm -hmm. the sense of humor, because this is the funniest one they've done so far. And right. and uh, hear, hear me out on this elaboration. Tell me if you agree or not. I think they're doing, in this Shazam movie, a perhaps more clever version of comedy than the Marvel movies, folks. And here's what I yeah. mean. In the Marvel movies, the comedy famously is in the form of quips. It's the characters mm -hmm. deciding to be stand-up comedians and saying funny little lines. In this movie... They're making joke -em ups yeah. That's right. In this movie... The characters are not trying to be funny by saying jokes. The characters themselves and their situations are funny. Point. Mm -hmm. Point number one. Shazam catches a bus and he wants to drop it, but there's a dog sitting there and he's like, dog, <laughs> fucking dog, get out of the way. That's funny yeah. situational comedy. Uh, right. it, it, Iron Man, if he caught a bus, he'd be like, oh, oh, the only thing iron about this is my dick. Am I right, folks? <laughs> like he would have made a quip. So I, I, yeah, I appreciated the authentic. Yeah, that's what Iron Man would say. I would have uh I, I appreciated the more clever sort of situational comedy, the, the comedy that derives from two teenage boys and one of them can become a superhero and they're kind of mm -hmm. being silly in that way, but not doing fucking quips. They're not trying to be funny, they're just funny characters. And I I, right. I, I think I like that better. Well also they're children. They're they're going to have a different like perspective to all of this than adults would have and yeah. Yeah. It makes more sense for them to be quipping than kids. Well, like, they weren't even necessarily quipping, I don't think. I think they were just, a lot of the time, just being themselves, and that was funny in it of itself. Whereas mm -hmm. the Marvel mm -hmm. characters sort of go out of their way to make <laughs> stupid jokes. Like, oh, uh -huh. let's go play hide the zucchini. <laughs> Hulk's going to fuck you in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shut the no. fuck up, dude. We're trying, to, we're trying to fight robots and shit. What are you doing? Robert Downey Jr. literally joking about raping uh, <laughs> one of the characters in Avengers 2. With, with, a, with a big uh, three-foot thick cock. Disgusting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Um I think one of my favorite parts of the movie is when uh, they talk about he can, he's bulletproof essentially, he has bullet immunity, and they just <laughs> shoot him right in the face a bunch of times. Yes, yeah, he's like, yeah, shoot him again, and shoot him again. <laughs> I love that they're just, shoot him in the face. <laughs> Let's see if that works. Like, this is totally shit that I would do if I were a kid who had superpowers. Yeah, and like, that's I'm not a like, quip, that's, that's just ranger. funny. That's just the characters right. in a situation that is funny. Mm -hmm. right. I also thought that, like, even though the villain isn't the biggest part of it, I like that they actually set up the villain's, like, origin story and how he was somebody who was, like, outside of the, the very magical thing and w was kind of, like, trying to get those powers. And, like, he, he actually had a reason to be doing a lot of the stuff he was doing. Now, Florian, oh, as a man who is uh, very abusive towards his own son, what did you think about <laughs> the, the overly evil father of the villain? Wow. Well, I I think he was a bit unrealistic, but I just love the the villain himself. He, I I don't think I've seen a better a, a better villain in in any of these cape shit things. So that's good, I guess. Better than Thanos. F fuck Thanos. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Thanos isn't good. He he's so fucking stupid. He, he's he, not good. He's right. <laughs> his plan wouldn't survive one minute of scrutiny oh yeah we're just gonna kill half of all people oh what guess what they're gonna have children again you're gonna have the same problem every every 100 years you can just go get more infinity stones and then <laughs> snap again okay so more e infinity stones here it's the villain yeah. in this movie is played by mark strong if i yeah uh, he was the guy the from low winter sun himself <laughs> low winter sun yeah he's in that show i was gonna say is he the guy from kingsman yeah, he is the guy from Kingsman. Uh, yeah, he's the, the, he's the guy Calad. who... Yeah, he, he blowed himself up in Kingsman 2. Country roads, uh, take me home. Great actor, great actor. 
place I belong. Now, I've seen a lot of criticism that this villain is a uh, weak sauce, boys. That he's, uh -huh. he's very one-dimensional and boring. But I found him just uh, delightfully devilish the entire time. Even if his plan yeah. was like very thin and and not that imaginative, I I, right. I, I think his performance and his motivation of like. Fuck my parents. Fuck my brother. Fuck my dad. Oh, I'm not. I'm not the chosen one. Huh? I'm not pure of heart. Fuck this shit, man. I'm gonna. I, I like that he dedicates his whole life to finding the the magical uh, castle, wizard castle, from when yeah. he was a kid. And uh, right. I, I think his methodology of finding it um, was really cool. I wish we would have had more scenes of like the research lab of him interviewing all these people who had similar experiences. I thought that was all right, pretty right. neat. That's a cool, that's a cool thing. Yeah. I also like how like Billy Batson isn't necessarily a chosen one. He was like just the last resort. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. Like... They, they ran out of time. That's great. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I like that. Are you sure? I thought he, he was somewhat pure of heart in the end. Was he really? Well, wrong? in the end, it turned out he was good, but like. Yeah, no, I mean, not necessarily the the perfect person they were looking for. No, he used his superpowers to become a YouTube him. star and beg people for money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anybody who's I mean, a star on YouTube hurt. is not pure of heart whatsoever. <laughs> Trust me. How, how is that a bad thing? I wish more superheroes had YouTube channels. <laughs> what, in real life? Well, I don't know, in, in movies. <laughs> oh. Oh. So wait, <laughs> every single movie is about a superhero who has to run a YouTube channel. Great. Well, that well, sounds it, awesome, it Florian. If you ask me, like if you ask me, running a YouTube channel kind of is a superpower, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> as soon as Superman gets done punching the fuck out of Brainiac, he just goes, Hey guys, thanks for watching, like and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> remember to donate to my Patreon, link is right below. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't do that more in the the Spider-Man Homecoming movie. That like he would, yeah, because you know, like he had videos on YouTube, but I don't think he was the one putting them up. Was he? well, you see, Monkey Peter Parker is famously always poor, so you can't make. Shows He's also money. famously a uh, like a cameraman, right? Why didn't <laughs> he could have filmed yeah. videos of him doing shit and then made some ad revenue off that shit? Yeah, man, yeah. Man, I wish they would just take Peter Parker and they he would make the best YouTube channel of all time. He would be a millionaire and then he would be, turn into a, a a cross between Justin Bieber and PewDiePie. It would be the mm -hmm. best. Well, why he, doesn't Spider-Man so insufferable? Why doesn't Spider-Man <laughs> use his powers to like rob a bank or something to become rich? Like why doesn't he just Yeah, do that? why does he do that? <laughs> hey, rich, why doesn't he do that? Yeah, why? why What's he, wrong with that? Powers to become rich? Why doesn't Spider-Man use his powers to like rob a bank or something so we can be rich? <laughs> <laughs> because with great power comes great responsibility. That's why. Well, yeah, he has a responsibility to right. to help his aunt May not live in a <laughs> shitty apartment. Yeah, right. Not foreclose on her home. <laughs> no. So speaking of homes, most of this movie takes place in a foster home. What did you guys think yeah. of the the six foster kids who poor Billy Batson is forced to live with? They were great. Like somehow they were able to fucking introduce five other characters who all seemed like their own individual person wow. who had their own behavior. And then I'm not going to say what happens eventually, but like basically when the thing at the end of the movie happens, it feels earned. It feels like every one of them have had their thing that they've, they've been and they now get to yeah express that. It's great. Man, I saw they, they spent way too much time on all that stuff with, with the kid. Like the first part where he runs away from the from the other foster f from the other foster stuff. I, I mm -hmm. thought that was completely pointless because we already had another kid. We had the we, I guess we start out with the villain as a kid. Yeah. And that's good. But then we so much time spent with just these kids and nothing to do. Oh, I didn't like that. I what do you mean nothing to do? They're building character for him. That's yeah, something you don't seem no. to like in movies. The is theme of the characters film. being built up. The theme of the film is is not superhero punching, Florian. It's Billy Batson trying to find his family. The whole time right. he, he thought finding his family meant finding his mom who mm -hmm. abandoned him as a child. But no, in fact, the true family was the friends we made along the way, folks. <laughs> it's about Billy Batson realizing, I don't need to go find my mom. My mom's a dumb fucking cunt. I yeah. should become family with these weird foster kids who are... Very diverse in a lot of ways. <laughs> we're we're kind of we're kind of getting into spoilers there when he finds his mom and stuff. But I love that this movie does that. I love that it's like your mom fucking abandoned you at this fair, and that's just how your fucking life is. Like you can you can make something good aside from that, but that is always going to be a shitty part of your life that your mom fucking abandoned you. Oh man, man, what a, man, what a, what a, what a, that mom was such a bitch. Oh my god. <laughs> 
I, I don't yeah. know how how the fuck he didn't just punch her when she she just said, Whoa! "Oh, I, 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 I'm wow. gonna take care of you." I thought that the cops had it. They, I I thought they'd be fine raising you in a foster home. We're good, I, right? I don't, know, I don't know how he contained himself. Jesus Christ! <laughs> wow! If <laughs> what, I make what fun a of hero uh, Florian would be. <laughs> if I make fun of Florian's corn pizza one more time, you might hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's uh since uh, Erich wants to go into spoilers, let's uh give our our overall final thoughts on the movie without spoilers and then we'll really dive deep into the film. Erich, yeah. would you recommend Shazam? I would absolutely recommend Shazam. I think this is like repeatedly a lot of these superhero movies tend to completely surprise me in that i think so often oh we've seen all this shit before it's all going to be the same i'm tired of this shit but every like year or so there's something that surprises me or some some kind of big shit moment happens that makes me uh reevaluate and think that we can watch these fucking superhero movies forever but uh yeah shazam feels like a more family oriented movie uh that really focuses on family but that doesn't have to be a bad thing and i think the movie really leans on that as a strength it, it's got strong horror moments. I, I don't think the action in this movie is particularly good, but it doesn't really, really matter because most of the time it's just a fun sequence that we're watching and the jokes are there. They're solid. Like my audience was laughing and loving this movie. The the Spanish speaking people to the left and right of me both seemed to love it, though I couldn't understand the Spanish <laughs> they were saying. But yeah. Hi, Chihuahua. I'm guessing that's what they <laughs> were saying. Me gusta. Me gusta el movio. <laughs> it could have been Bumblebee Man right next to me, and I wouldn't. <laughs> Don't they yeah, stop me, stop. Tequila? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Yeah, but I, I, I just, I just loved what this movie did. I really hope they get a sequel because they have to fucking make more of these before these kids get so old. Wow. Well, well why do you think so? Don't you think they'll be interesting when they're older? Yeah, they will, but that cute little black girl is going to grow in fucking, like, Whoa. 10. <laughs> oh, no, we don't want that. going to grow 10 years, <laughs> like, two. All right, all right. Florian, would you recommend this movie? I would if you like Annoying Kids. Yeah. Wow. Now, actually, it was a pretty good movie, I guess. I mean, I didn't hate Captain Marvel either. It's just that I guess the story didn't make any sense. And in this one... Well, I guess the story made more sense, but I, I don't like how they spent the first 20, half an hour, maybe. And I, I, I the, the family stuff really grew on me in the end, but I Yeah, I it's kind of like, like how it grew on Billy part. Batson. You went on the <laughs> same journey he did, Florian. Yeah, but the part I didn't like was him in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. He well, was annoying. He had to learn to love himself. <laughs> I guess. We right. barely talked about Chuck, guys. No, I'm about to go into God fucking Chuck, it. dude. I'm about to go right, into right. Chuck with my recommendation. All right. Because I'm I'm a big fan of Chuck. I'm a big fr fan of Zachary Levi. When I found out he was cast in Thor 2 and Thor 3, I thought, oh, hell yeah. And then he's barely in it, and I thought, oh, well, mm -hmm. fuck that. I, uh, I'm such a big Chuck fan. I went and saw the, uh, the Chipmunks movie in theaters that had Chuck in it <laughs> just because wow. he was in it all those years ago. And I've, I saw that. I've been so disappointed <laughs> that just for him. Well, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I don't he even was know him. But, no, not you, monkey. Uh, but uh, sorry, I, <laughs> I was so disappointed that uh, that Chuck's career didn't really take off. He didn't have a big film career. But uh, so for him to get cast in this movie was it was like, oh shit! Zachary Levi is finally getting his big blockbuster break. He might be in a movie that makes close to a billion dollars. Although mm -hmm. who knows if it, it will won't. It won't make that. It will or won't. It won't. It'll get closer to five hundred million to six hundred million. But that's good. Yeah, How much this movie was made. This movie was made for eighty million. So like Whoa! it's already made its money back. It, it's gonna make double its money in this first weekend. Wow. So that's fine. damn. Um, but. My problem with the movie is, and let me ask you this, folks, and it's not really more of a problem uh, rather than a uh, a pondery, if that's a word. It made me ponder in my brain. <laughs> Has an actor ever been top billed for a movie like the poster says, Zachary Levi? Has a, an actor ever been the, the number one star of a movie and not appeared in the movie until a full hour into it? Has that ever happened wow. until now? Because we don't, Chuck does not appear on screen until like one hour into the movie. Yeah, how soon Hannibal Lecter? I mean, he's not. He wasn't top billing though. No, he's not top billed, and also I don't even know if it's not. It's called the Silence of the Lambs, so it's not like yeah. the, the only comparable thing would be like 
Leo DiCaprio in Django Unchained getting third billing, and then he shows up halfway through the movie. But that's only third <laughs> billing. Like, if Jamie Foxx showed up halfway through Django Unchained, that'd be the same thing. How is Zachary Levi top billed? It should be Billy Batson himself top billed. He's in the movie the whole yeah, time. I agree. Asher I, I Angel, whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah, that kid got cucked by Zachary Levi. Uh -huh. I guess kids make less money, but damn, he... he... Chuck Reeve wasn't the star of this. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know why why you guys focus on him so much. Well, it's because you got to sell the movie. And I, oh yeah, yeah, Zachary Levi is a huge pull. Clearly, oh, you're the best. <laughs> He's been on hit show Chuck for. I fucking love six Chuck. Seasons. All right, but uh, uh, this is uh, either uh, ironically or unironically the first or second best DC movie in my opinion. Uh, I really mm -hmm. liked it. It's far better than Captain Marvel. I'd say it's. If you're, if we're gonna th randomly throw it into like the Marvel hierarchy, I'd say it's in like <laughs> the the upper middle. Like it's a, it's a yeah, I'd say upper third of the Marvel movies. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. So uh, that's enough. That's enough of that. Let's go into spoilers. Let's talk about spoilers, spoilers real quick. <laughs> I I muted the audio for bit donations and still they're going through. So <laughs> I gotta waste my time trying to turn that shit off again. <laughs> Fucking yeah. stupid. Can you hear the yeah, I can hear the sound effect and it's gonna be in the. The upload, Damn. which is great. But uh, Irish, get us started on the spoiler talk. All right. So by the end of the movie, uh, Chuck has been trying to save his family for most of the running time Chuck from again, uh, damn it. Uh, Dr. Silva. What, where the fuck the villain's name is? We're just going to call him uh, uh, Low Winter Sun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's that actor's name? Why can't I remember it? Mark Strong. Mark Strong. Uh, he's been trying to save his family from Mark Strong. But then as Mark Strong has him on his knees... Ready to suck a dick. Um, Chuck remembers I could transfer my power into other people because we need to fill those six, seven thrones or whatever. Um, and he transfers a lot of his power into his family, and the family gets to beat the shit out of a bunch of sin, and then uh, they save the day. I love that it's an entire family, an entire superhero family, getting to kick ass at the end. Is, is it the parents as well? No, the parents aren't there. Did you see the movie, Florian? <laughs> yeah, but they turn into different actors. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The but, parents but, aren't the there. The parents never do anything. Oh, that's too bad. They should have been there. I would like to see the, the fat dad be, become a superhero. That would have been great. Did you fall asleep in the movie, Eerid style? You don't remember oh, if the Eerid? parents are in on the secret or not? Yeah. No, I remember that part. I was just like, "Damn, that guy looks a lot like his dad." Oh well, whatever. Okay, let, let, let me <laughs> Savannah, give you Doctor Savannah. Let me give you the real yeah. perspective on uh, all of the orphan family getting their own superpowers. Uh huh. Uh cute for this movie. Fun uh -huh. for you know the twenty minute climax of the film. The audience clapped when they all transformed and got you know their their Chuck bodies. But right. if. Uh, if this is like the new norm and <laughs> and the, the sequel movie That's is so like funny. all about all of them having powers, I'm not going to like that. That's way really? too much why? for me. Really? Why? It's way too I, I, I like to focus on one main character and if we're going to have like a fucking Justice League of Shazams flying around and I have to focus on all of them, I don't know. I'm I'm it's well, going to it's going to take a bit out of it for me. I want Chuck to be the, front and center. They'll hey, find a way to kneecap everybody else like it's uh, either some kind of villain's power is to put them all back or just, whatever. I don't know. Logistically, giving a six-year-old little girl the power of Superman, I think, is a horrible idea. Um, <laughs> realistically, it would never work. I mean, she's going to just Shazam herself in the middle of class one day and uh, and fucking kill somebody. It's. I think it's a yeah. horrible, horrible idea. Oh no. But well, they're good. They're good. They're good natured. They'll they'll use it to save people. Well, look, Florian, let me ask you this because you you seem to be uh, champing at the bit here about this uh, uh, topic. I, I saw a thread on 4chan. Somebody posted a picture of the you know the little uh, six year old black girl. She becomes like an adult, and they posted a picture of the adult version and said, "Would it be legal to have sex with this character?" <laughs> of course, you had to bring this up. So I'm wondering what you think. So depraved. What, what do you think? It's not okay. What the fuck is it's, wrong with you? The actress Jesus. is like 25 years old. It's like a full-fledged adult. She could kick my ass. Why can't I no, fuck her? No, she, she's, she's playing a three-year-old girl. You're insane. Three! <laughs> <laughs> now she's three? Whoa! Wow. How old is she? Ten? I don't know. She's six. E-Rich, what do you think? Oh, can, you, can you fuck the adult version? No. 
What about in the, mo- <laughs> my, in the mine, movie Big, t- Tom Hanks fucked that one chick? Was that rape yeah, too? Yeah, and that, that's real. Yeah, that's real fucked up. <laughs> There's a there's an yeah. allusion to the, the big movie in this movie. You guys see that when they're yeah yeah the the piano keys yeah yeah I like that they included oh, that wow. little detail. Mm-hmm. That, that was a cool scene. Anyways, I think that at least the, the the handicapped brother should be should maintain his superpowers. I don't know what they'll do with the rest. I, I guess they could make it good. I I guess they they should make it so they that they go into different parts of the earth and then they protect everyone there. Maybe that would be good. I mm-hmm. guess that would be weird though, because they they'd have to to separate. I I think the best way to do it is uh, the the six year old black girl goes on a tantrum with her superpowers, and they have to like <laughs> stop her without killing their own. <laughs> Calm sister. her down. Yeah. Oh my it, god. You can't give a six year old fucking Superman powers. It's that's so stupid. Yeah. You expect all of these <laughs> characters to keep this a secret and not abuse the power? Like it's not gonna happen. Are She's you a good saying girl. she didn't do nothing? Are you saying that a a, a six year old black woman is not capable of wielding this power? Woman, that is, yes, <laughs> a growing woman. Okay. <laughs> uh, so She's so you, girl, you, would, you would fuck her, but you wouldn't give her this hey, power. Damn I, it. What did I ever say? I would fuck her. I asked you for <laughs> your perspective. No, you asked me for my permission. Admit it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. Here's how you know if uh, if she's qualified to have these powers at the age of six. Does she own a shirt that says "I'm not bossy, I'm the boss," <laughs> with well, like with like boss. pink glitter on go. it? <laughs> I'm not bossy. I'm the boss. Um. <laughs> All right. So guys, you guys remember the very end of this movie where uh, Doctor Savannah is scrolling all those uh, uh, symbols on the inside of his prison cell. Did you guys stay for the after credits? No, I, yeah, I, I never stay for the after credits. You'll have to tell me. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, wait. I'm, I'm sorry. This is mid credits. I didn't stay for that either. Oh fuck! All right, so no, because it, because the movie, like I said, the movie ended very late. It was oh, like yeah. seven twenty. Yeah, and yeah. and I so, was I was sneaking into Pet Cemetery at seven o'clock, so I right, didn't want to be late to Pet Cemetery. Sure, sure. Um, so. In, in in the movie, it, it was in the movie. Um, there's this little like caterpillar thing on the uh, on on like a branch in that uh, crazy magic world. Okay. Yeah. You guys remember this? No. Definitely. Um, at the very end of this movie, uh, Mark Strong is in his cell, and this caterpillar uh, comes and has like a mechanical voice, and he starts talking about how they're going to conquer the seven realms and shit like that. So this is some crazy shit. This is Mister Mind. Who is a two-inch talking worm who has telepathic powers and genius intellect and he forms a thing called the monster society of evil and that is crewed by adolf hitler Whoa! Uh, benito mussolini what the nazi the crocodile captain man nazi. you saw in there captain nazi hideki Ch- tojo uh the <laughs> wow. are these characters all dead I need to see this. This is going to be the best movie ever. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, you think they're actually was... going to have Adolf Hitler and Shazam 2? No. I, I, I need this to happen. They they need to put <laughs> him in there, God damn it. This is in the comics from the 40s. So. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's going to be springtime for Hitler. It needs to happen. <laughs> Yeah, but they are going insane with with these these comic book movies. I never thought I'd saw I'd see like a two inch worm be the villain uh, for a probable sequel. So, Wait, so, we'll see. so uh, Mark Strong's so, so character think... was in prison and he was writing the symbols so that he could return to the Shazam world, or what? Yes, yes. Why did they he give him paper symbols. and pencil? He, no, no, he was writing them on his cell walls. In blood, with, like, some kind of, it was like scratching them in somehow, but like his thing broke his like pen thing he was using bro oh. he wait so kind he's of using a rock or something i don't did know did he actually activate the doorway or did the caterpillar just come no, apropos of nothing caterpillar just came out of nowhere what the fuck he didn't actually activate the doorway what yeah he, he ran out of, of charcoal i guess and then he just threw mm-hmm. a tantrum okay, so yeah, what, right. what, what was the post credit scene the, uh, there was no after after credits it was oh, just the credits lame yeah, I, I only or at least i didn't see it I stayed for the song, I guess. So that was good. You always stay for these fucking songs. Yeah, yeah. Corn's like, I'm going to listen to the song. <laughs> Waiter, bring me movie. more corn pizza. I'm staying for the song. <laughs> <God damn. laughs> 
Uh, do you guys have any other thoughts on the Shazam movie? Well, I gotta say, I, I'm not fully on board with this this comedy style they got. And when I first saw the trailer, I saw I, I legit thought that he transformed into a buff Adam Sandler. I don't know that <laughs> the the jokes they were exactly like if it was Adam Sandler. I don't understand. Ah, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> What's well, the, the last the ones... Adam Sandler movie you saw? <laughs> it's been ages oh pixels i guess yeah so it was definitely on that level but that's only the the parts with chuck i guess the 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 kind of body humor of him being chuck i guess that's I, that's the part i i didn't like that much so that's, okay yeah <laughs> i don't know guess it's i guess they should have gotten adam sandler though that would have oh been my definitely better. god shut up Give it to me. Uh, Erich, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. You eat some corn pizza <laughs> over there? No, no. Um, what was I going to say about fucking... Oh, did you guys see the Superman thing at the end? They didn't actually uh, get Superman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. an empty costume. Well, yeah. Why didn't they just, just put him in like Princess Leia? Yeah, the, because Michael... he's currently on the way out. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm curious about that because like the the final joke of the movie is that uh, Shazam invites Superman to go eat lunch with them at, at their high school, um, and like Superman walks in but you don't see his face; it's just like his body, but it's the same suit from the other DC movies. My question is, like, is, is, are they implying that it's like the Henry Cavill actual Superman or? Is yeah, that... yeah, it's the Henry Cavill Superman. It's the Ben so, Affleck Batman like, because it's the same batarangs and shit. So why not just? actually have his head in it why not because they couldn't get him like he was busy doing something else and uh he's currently maybe not going to be superman anymore yeah but like so now if they replace the character i mean it's going to be very obvious that it's a different character right you can like cgi his head into a scene or i mean it's it's a one second shot surely he's not that busy i just think if you if you're not going to actually show all of Superman maybe write a different funny ending because it yeah, kind yeah. of threw me out of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't get this anyways. Why the fuck do you like Superman and Batman? Those are like the lamest versions of those characters. Fuck you, Florian. It's not the lamest. <laughs> well, like, my, my question any is, is... Superman, any version of Superman would be amazing in that world. Well, yeah, yeah any, but how how does should how is Shazam friends with Superman now that he can invite him to go eat lunch? I'm sure you I mean, just super as, him. As soon as it comes out that there's this superpower thing, Superman would want to check it out. I think um, I guess... that reminds me, there's a scene in this movie that I think was throwing shade at the other DC movies. There's a scene where um, a, yeah. a little kid is sitting in front of his window and he's playing with a Batman, uh, Superman, uh, two toys, and he's like smashing them together, which is like, you know, th- oh, this is Batman v Superman, look how cool this is. And then he sees out his window shazam fighting mark strong and they're like doing the same things and the kid looks at the batman and superman and says fuck these these toys suck and he throws the toys and he's staring at shazam i think this movie's saying yeah that's right motherfuckers (laughs) shazam's way better than batman and superman in these movies fuck you Mm -hmm. kid is that seriously how you how you caught that? Damn, I saw the kid was because the was kid off. was enjoying Batman and Superman until he saw that Shazam was way better and he threw Batman and Superman away. How else yeah, would you he interpret en- that? He enjoyed them until he saw the real thing out there. That in e- real life. exactly my point. Batman versus <laughs> Superman, practically kids' toys compared to the majesty that is the Shazam movie. That's what this movie is trying to say. Uh, right. Damn. I guess you don't know which one you like better. Damn. So, do you guys like the costume that he has? Like, yeah. it's obviously fake muscles and stuff. No. No, I think it's hilarious and awesome, yeah. Yeah, I think it's great. People <laughs> so, were really making fun of it when it first came out, but I think it's it's, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, like, it's not meant to be taken seriously like the Superman costume. It's meant to be funny. Dude, it, that costume is such an eyesore. The symbol alone is so hideous. What the fuck? The, just the, the lightning? There's such a disgustingly fat lightning. What is this? Yeah. It just takes up so much space on him as well. Oh my god. All right, I think I've uh, I think I've expelled all of my th- opening thoughts and, and closing thoughts even on the Shazam movie. So, mm-hmm. should we uh should we talk a little bit about should we give people a little update? A little update on the the uh, uh America's Next Top E-Rich contest, folks. Yeah. In oh, case yeah. you've been you've been living under a rock, E-Rich will be departing the show. Here's here's what's funny about Erich leaving the show. He says, "Oh yeah, 
I'm going to leave on the Avengers Endgame episode. That'll be my last episode, except for other movies. I'll come back once in a while for things like John <laughs> Wick Chapter 3. Erich, John Wick Chapter 3 comes out two weeks after Avengers Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be like you we'll didn't even leave at all. Yeah. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Maybe we should just, just say you're leaving after John Wick. And then, like, yeah, let's do it that way. and then right between those two movies is Detective Pikachu. I don't see why you wouldn't want to do that right. episode too. Um, really, you should just stick around until Star Wars Episode Nine. <laughs> I mean, just just screw with your career, man. Just do this, man. <laughs> but who's got something better to do than this? I wouldn't know who. We, we announced the contest. People can submit their applications, their 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 um um um, um auditions. There are audition recordings to become the next E-Rich to replace him on mm -hmm. this show. And uh, on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash monkeyjones, I've been listening live to some of these auditions, and the chat has been help helping me decide who should be in the running in the future contest. So if you would like right. to hear some of these auditions and, and, and play along at home, just go follow me at twitch.tv slash monkeyjones. We, we've had a lot of fun. E. Rich and Florian, you listen to a couple of these. Uh, e. Rich, do you have yeah. any favorite contenders so far for your replacement? I do. Um, the black guy. Okay. W one guy called in and said, hey, I'm black, so you should choose me. <laughs> That's all he mm -hmm. said. <laughs> Impressive resume. I, I liked what I saw. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, everybody thought it was fitting that uh, E. Rich the Cuck would be replaced by a black man because of his mm -hmm. race and nothing else. Uh, Right, Florian, you're you're important in this. You said you really want Citizen Cinema to, to join the show. <laughs> no, I, I want the guy <laughs> who had the really bad mic quality in in, in that clip. Who Erich? I want him. He, he was hilarious. <laughs> no, there was one guy <laughs> who had, in that ten minute highlights reel of the of listening to the auditions. Yeah, well, yeah, you're gonna get that guy on. He was funny. What about my brother? Do you want my brother on the show, Patchy? Sure. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know. I might be a bit weird. I might be a bit of a third wheel if if you two are, are there and your brother. No, if anything, I'll be the third wheel. I think you and because he said in his audition tape, um, I I <laughs> bought the Binding of Isaac for my Switch, so Florian will automatically like me. Is what my brother <laughs> said. Yeah, I, I always follow the money. That's right. <laughs> when my brother my comes friend. on, you'll you'll have to thank him for that corn pizza he helped you buy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I thought I thought Florian, you don't get any money from the. Uh... After of I get money. Oh, okay. Anything I with Binding of Isaac on, and he gets like 80% of the sale. It goes right to his bank account. <laughs> not, not that much. <laughs> uh, so, um, so I think the way this contest is going to work is that I, I keep getting more applications in at uh, monkeyjones at gmail.com. They send them in. And I think we're, I'm going to choose like my eight or maybe even 16 favorite ones. I'll throw everybody into a tournament bracket. And then once E. Rich leaves, we'll give everybody one chance to come on the show and we'll pit them head to head against each other, back to back episodes or however you want to do it. And people, I guess, will mm. vote for who they like better every every time wow. until uh, we only have one man remaining and he'll be the new E. Rich. I think that's wow. the best way to do it. Yeah, that's great. Can't wait. And on episodes where Erich returns, like for, you know, John Wick or Star Wars, I think we'll put him on the board too and see if even he can beat <laughs> these new people. Yeah, that's right. Why don't we just disqualify these new people and and just keep him on? No, no, I think it'd be funny uh, if if the new people got more votes than Erich. Oh yeah, yeah I guess I guess it would be a free win for them actually. Yeah, that, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just put me on there. Just put me on there, even though I won't come back. <laughs> yeah. See if anybody <laughs> votes for me at all. Uh, Erich, speaking of, uh, but before we we end the episode, I want to hear your thoughts on Star Wars Episode Nine. It's we're almost in mid-April now. There's no trailer, right. no title. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this? Um, Star Wars Celebration, the uh, Star Wars convention, is next week. So um, I think then we will get both a title and a trailer, but we'll see. Damn, okay. can't wait. Okay, hot scoop from America's biggest Star Wars fan, e mm -hmm. McCoy. I will be there in person. You really going to the Star Wars con? Hell yes, I am. Where's it at? Chicago. Oh, shit, fam. Wait. Cheat town. Wait, when is it? In, in next week, you said? It's starting next uh, Thursday. Oh, oh, I'm going to be in Chicago, but uh, I'll be in Chicago in May, so I guess I'll, I'll miss it. Ah, oh, man. Like oh, ships what, what crossing in the night. You were totally going to go there. Damn. 
If if Erich was there, I would totally go. <laughs> I, I could possibly get you a bet. Nah, nah. I, I fucking hate Star Wars. They would they would boo me as soon as they saw me walk in. <laughs> yeah, you, should, you should get Asterius as well, and then he can buy ten porks for you. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with more Kino. We're gonna do Pet Cemetery in the very next episode. So for the Shazam Is It Kino special, I have been Monkey Jones. Uh, I've been Erich. I've been uh, informed it's pronounced Chai Town, so uh, I, I I fucked up. Oh man, I'm Florian, and you can find my YouTube channel. It's called Game Squid. Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you next time. Adios. All right, let's Shazam! do let's, let's do a little intermission before we do Pet Cemetery. Uh, dude, right. Your mic was so bad the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you, you heard it too. I can't believe you just played along with it. That I, I think it sounds uh, it sounds good on the stream, but um, yeah. If, but you guys can understand me, okay, on Discord. Yeah, that was fine. Well, well barely. <laughs> I wonder if this is what Asterios has to put up with whenever we record Boomer versus Zoomer as well. Uh, He's okay. such a boomer. He doesn't even realize it. He, he just thinks up. Oh, yeah, that's just mm. uh, the level of technology we're at. Oh, this is what it always sounds like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be buried in a pet cemetery. I guess um, I could, if you guys really want me to, I could plug in my second second microphone and have that one just be on Discord. Is it is it bad enough that fuck. I should do that? We'll just find something else than Discord at some point. Mm, okay. What? <laughs> one one day, Teamspeak. One day. No, never it's Teamspeak. The, it's got the best audio quality, man. You missed out. <laughs> Do you I'll, like uh, all your quality? Mm. Yeah, I'm not going to fuck with it right now, but for the, the next time we record, I'll I'll plug in my second mic and have that one just be on Discord. All right. Now, Discord's not using my webcam mic. It's just that my microphone, for whatever reason, doesn't like streaming and Discording at the same time. It doesn't like to do more than one thing, and I don't know why. <laughs> oh, Patchy <laughs> says there was a post credit scene in Shazam. Yes, oh. they, they were trying to get him to see if he could talk to fish like Aquaman. Oh, okay, <laughs> great. No. All right, you guys ready to do some pet cemetery? Yeet. Okay. Uh, just a sec, actually. I'm gonna uh, open the curtain. What do you think he's getting? Corn pizza? Probably. That's all he ever does. He's getting is eat corn pizza. Yeah, right. No, he's no, getting no. the curtain so he can. Get this uh, corn now pizza I can see. Right I was in the dark, but now I can see. Corn pizza. Corn pizza in the sky. Okay, you guys ready for this shit? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Hopefully, I sound really, really shitty in your guys' ears, and I can scream the whole fucking time. Yeah, it's pure oh, suffering. Well, we can just turn you down, but still. Yeah, yeah, just turn me down. Okay, here I'll we go. Turn you off. Shut the fuck up. Oh, Shut up! up! Jam Jamie, pull me off. <laughs> Ooh, welcome to a very spooky episode of Is It Kino? I am your pet host, Monkey Johnson, joined as always by the squid pet and the uh, whatever animal uh, Erich is going to be pet. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> I bought... oh, what geez. is that a fucking cat? He sounds like a monkey. Oh no, no, it's a cat. It's, it's kind of a demon just... cat. It's making me sick how well he can make cat sound effects. I feel like yeah. I'm getting Vietnam flashbacks <laughs> to a furry convention I never went to. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this shit off. I'm ending the show. <laughs> Stop no. it! You rich, please become a human again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We need to bury him. It'll, it'll <laughs> we should legitimately bury Erich and actually, <laughs> actually have him be killed for this. Oh no. Hey everybody, welcome to your favorite movie review podcast. That's right, is it Kino? Today we're talking about the new horror film Pet Cemetery, the remake, the squeakwool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Rated R. Based, of course, on the legendarily scary. Stephen King novel. Folks, let me ask you this. I've read many a novel in my day. 
Never mm. once in my life has a novel scared me. Now, I haven't read any Stephen King, oh. so maybe I'm just missing out on the, the best of the best. Does anybody actually get scared by words on a page? Uh, <laughs> hmm. Erich, have you read a book that scared you? How can a book uh, yeah, be scary? I, I think I think I was scared by the Annihilation movie. I'm sorry, book. <laughs> Fuck, I said it wrong. I just I don't um, I don't see it. That's like I'm, I'm so removed from the emotions when it's text on right. a page. Like a movie can scare me with like I can see the characters or the actors emoting and being frightened and the music. Mm -hmm. A book, it's just like the way you read it. But in, in my in my mind, I'm picturing things. I'm playing it like a movie, and my imagination is way scarier than a lot of shit that could be thought of. And... But it just seems like I'll, I'll with the book, you have to put in a whole lot of effort for it to be scary. A book can be right. easily funny or thrilling or, or dramatic, but scary? I don't know. I'll do this. This book called The Bible, it has this really <laughs> good villain in it called Yahweh. Oh man, people are so scared of it. You gotta watch out. I mean, they, Yah they... Yahweh unironically is the villain of the Old Testament. I don't know why people pretend he's not. Even the Jewish people who worship that shit honestly believe that. Yeah, they, they build all temples just to, to appease him. It's crazy. They, they, they slaughter lambs and everything. Yeah. It's really interesting. The what, what about creepypastas, monkey? Have you ever read, read scary creepypastas? No, oh, no, they're not fucking scary. From Bible to creepypastas. But then again, may Squidward suicide. Maybe this oh, is no. my uh, maybe this is my autism slash uh, sociopathy coming to uh, to a head here, folks. Because typically movies don't really scare me either. So the question yeah, is, did yeah. this new film? Give me the spooks that I needed to be wetting my pants in the theater, shaking oh, in my no. boots, folks. Have to take off my jacket because I'm getting the cold sweats, baby. Mm -hmm. Cream uh, in your jeans. <laughs> Erich, what did you think of Pet Cemetery, and did it make you cream your jeans? Um, so I've never seen the original Pet Cemetery, and I've never read the book Pet Cemetery. I have, however, like heard descriptions of what happens in those things. So when this movie rolled out, what was going on, I was just like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Cat comes back to life. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, you bury things and they come back to life. Cool, 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 cool. So like, it's, it's not anything that I haven't like expected watching this movie. I think it's done all right in the movie. And uh, for me, the thing you need to nail in this movie is you need to buy the, 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 the depths that the main character will sink to in order to... Uh, to make the movie work essentially and i think jason clark is kind of the perfect guy to do that because he he just looks weird and he always <laughs> wow. looks like he's slightly unhinged what else is what, what else do we know jason shit. clark from other than the classic film serenity yeah other than serenity i really don't know he was in the new terminator movie he was the uh, uh t1 <laughs> million <laughs> In that. I'll just remember him as the the guy who abused Anne hathaway in serenity my favorite movie yes, of the yes. year still Wait, was he the guy who who was this melted metal in Terminator? Is that him? Yeah, yeah. Holy shit! Wait, 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 wait. You're talking about Terminator Two? Or I don't know. I'm talking about Terminator Genesis. Oh well, I don't remember that one. He was John Connor, aka the T1 Million. Um. <laughs> oh wow. All right. So uh, yeah, I think the movie's fine. I think it does what it is trying to accomplish. It's it's really kind of a regular horror movie like it a regular one like just one this, is, this, is an, this is an audience this is a general audience horror movie and i think with the ideas of this movie is probably oh, it's, it's not a, it's not a deep and complex enough like yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the babadook this, this, oh what a real this scare isn't hereditary <laughs> this isn't hereditary or uh well, it follows. Yeah. Talk about true horror. Am I right, folks? Well, like, those movies have an interesting idea that they're playing with, and they, they spend time developing the characters. Like, I, I think this movie is somewhat trying to really replicate the book because the mother in this movie has these crazy flashbacks that she flash ba flashes back to, and we never really understand exactly what is going on there, but it kind of informs her life in a way, and even though she has almost nothing understand. to do with this movie, for the most part, like, it's really... It's really like in her head the entire time, which is very novel like. So, Wait, what don't you understand about those flashbacks? What the fuck was wrong with her sister or whatever? She had a she was twisted born that spine. Way. She was born that way the entire time? Yeah, yeah she was just super crippled. Fuck. Uh, I just want to say one thing I'll. Damn, that was what you didn't get. <laughs> one thing I'm going to miss when Erich. I thought she leaves. got sick or something, but like. What? No. 
one thing I'm going to miss when Erich leaves the show is when he'll go on for like a whole paragraph of thoughts and interjected yeah. in the middle will be a uh, Florian, like judging him, like making little yeah. snide comments. Like you didn't understand that. What the fuck? I know. What you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot all what he was saying. <laughs> and I really, I really enjoy that. Uh, it's going to be missed for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the best call. Okay, so Florian Everidge says this movie, a uh, pretty uh, uh, down the middle of the road uh, horror movie. Tell me, tell mm -hmm. me why he's wrong. Why is this the greatest horror movie you've seen, perhaps <laughs> all year? The greatest, Jesus. Well, uh, I, the thing is, I really don't like horror movies, yeah. and now, now that I've seen it, it's amazing to me how they can make a whole movie with so little story in it. It's <laughs> bizarre. Mm. Yep. Every once in a while, it's just some completely random, one minute long period where they where it's just really tense music, and then you're awaiting a jump scare, and oh, it's really predictable. Here it comes, mm -hmm. and th there's just so little to it. If you sum this movie up, it's probably going to be like two sentences. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh my opening salvo here will be again. Movies don't really scare me. The my my litmus test, uh, you know, the bar you have to pass to scare me is uh, one of my favorite movies of the decade. A little movie I like to call Green Room. It's probably yeah. the scariest movie I've ever seen. The most tense as fuck. Yeah, the most thrilling, tense, uh, truly frightening, horrific film I've I've ever seen in theaters. Mm -hmm. Um, and no other movie has ever compared to that. So it's like, okay, this this doesn't scare me, and this one definitely doesn't really scare me. I guess people. Uh, enjoy like the creepy suspenseful sort of atmosphere of these types mm -hmm. of movies but there's it's certainly not horrific and you, scary you're not right? gonna like have nightmares unless you're a small child but in terms of film quality the film itself not even the spooks and the ghouls and the in the jumps i'll say the film left me with a very very powerful feeling of mm -hmm. um incompleteness i feel mm. like I feel wow. like th they spent a good hour and 20 minutes building up to what the trailer told us would happen. <laughs> right, and right. Because it's not even a spoiler because it's in the trailer. He finds out that if you bury something in this special evil pet cemetery, it comes back to life. Then his daughter dies. So he buries his daughter there so that she'll come back to life. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. okay, we, I can't wait for the movie to hit this point because I know what happens because it's in the trailer. I can't wait <laughs> right. to see all the crazy, <laughs> all the crazy, spooky, fun stuff that's going to happen once his daughter comes back. And they spend an hour and 20 minutes building up to that. And then yeah. they finally happens. And then the movie ends like 20 minutes later. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking... Well, either the trailer fucked up or the movie fucked up because I feel like I'm missing another half an hour of this movie. And really, I think that might be the strangest b backhanded compliment I can give it is that I wish it was longer. That might be, be the first time in Is It Kino history that I've said instead of uh, the movie was too long, the movie was too short. I feel like like right. there's Are there's no sure? there's no resolution to me. It's like, OK, I, we, I, we hit this epic uh, spot, but now it's just now it's just done. I've, it I've, peaks too late and not high enough. Like it, it was like sure a premature ejaculation. Yeah. Are you sure you wouldn't want to cut like twenty minutes of pointless jump scares? Well, yeah, of course. Like what I'm the, the what I'm saying is it was completely unbalanced. Thanos would be disgusted. It's an hour mm -hmm. and twenty minutes of build up for twenty unsatisfying minutes of conclusion, and it was right. It's like what? Well, Honestly, this movie could have turned into an awkward comedy by the end, like where the <laughs> daughter is is has been resurrected and the mother doesn't like her and like they could have had like a dinner scene they could have like yeah, tried every to every movie like... like this needs a fucking dinner scene dinner scenes are kino <laughs> yeah. in every movie well, with some uh, the, the uh, only god forgives dinner scene fucking kino yeah every every movie that i don't even like has a kino dinner scene they could have done mm -hmm. it in this so easily Right, uh, like I, th I think this movie what, could what, really could have played with the. About? No, no, fuck you, Florian. I'm trying to talk. Um, Sorry. This movie could have really played with the Jason Clark trying to uh, uh, convince her that it's good that their daughter came back to life, and like just really awkward moments of them at the dinner table. He he's trying to feed her, <laughs> and she's like throwing out plates at the wall. Corn. Yeah, yeah, she's throwing plates like all. She that refuses shit. to on. eat the corn pizza. Could you imagine? Yes. <laughs> so. So uh, you're saying there's no dinner scene, but there's one scene where they eat. So is this dinner scene something specific that you mean? It's like it, it's, it's a an trope in movies. Scene. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. trope of the awkward dinner scene where everything like explodes and goes crazy. 
Oh, so it's with with one bad guy, I guess. Well, like um, I think Hereditary even had like a dinner scene kind of like this, where like yeah. the, the mom starts screaming at the son. Maybe that was a right. breakfast scene. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, you need you, you need these movies need scenes where all the family members sit down together for a Are meal, together. right? And the, the mm-hmm. tension builds up and the pressure builds up, and then by the end of the scene, like people are shouting at each other and everything's going bad. Those scenes are right, always right. pure fucking kino. That almost happened immediately. Like, as soon as she got home and saw uh, their daughter, she was like, oh, fuck this. Fuck everything. And, like, I think that's that's more believable, probably. But, like, she never even entertained the idea that this could this could work. It, well, it, she doesn't even need to entertain it. I think Jason, his name is Jason Clark or Jason Isaac? Yeah, Jason Clark. J- Jason Clark should have been, he, he's already clearly um pe- insane uh, yeah. yeah he's not he's not so insane I would, i'd say he's, he's grief insane he, he's off the deep end he's he's already mm-hmm. resurrected his daughter and made her a zombie why not make yeah. him like a forceful asshole he's like no we're sitting down as a family <laughs> we're eating this dinner yeah. together so like the it's like a sort of a sky uh, oh. a long time yeah. ago but like she could be like in a Skylar White situation where this is pretty much like <laughs> marital rape, but just because they're eating dinner together, it's like she's very uncomfortable and and doesn't want to be there at all. And like the the young son is crying and he's like, everybody's gonna sit here and enjoy this <laughs> meal together. And like the fucking you know, zombie daughter's throwing shit against the wall. And <laughs> the, the darker, better version of this to me is that the wife starts to go crazy because she's in a place with her dead daughter. He kills his wife takes her to the pet cemetery, brings her back to life. Oh, yeah, yeah. The same thing happens to the son, and so he has them, like, tied down, and he's trying to, like, recreate his his kind of perfect family with them. But, like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think, uh, and I don't, I, again, none of us have read or seen uh, the source material or, like, the previous right. versions of this. I think uh, making the resurrected people the the villains like the cat and the daughter the villains i think that was a mistake i think jason clark who is the the you know living human who is dealing with grief the great metaphor of what grief does to you i think Mm -hmm. he should have became the ultimate villain using the power of uh, i don't have the family i wanted anymore so i will craft Mm -hmm. it and force it back into reality my grief is taking over yeah why not have him kill his whole family and bring them back as zombies so that they'll always be with him yeah that being said i did like the ending of this well, how does that make sense? How how would that work? Because if they if the zombies aren't evil, then it wouldn't be particularly evil to 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 make your your family into zombies, I guess. Rather than okay, so I think this movie posits that like they like they, they don't come back as themselves. There's some kind of like demon or some right. kind of dark force that's animating them. I would have liked better that they are angry that they've been brought back to life, and they are like desperately trying to kill themselves, like so, kill themselves again, or like find a way <laughs> no. to. To end it well, again. But I, what, I don't know. It, what it makes me think of is in uh, Shutter Island. You guys seen Shutter Island? Probably. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, in yeah. like Leo's tragic backstory is that his wife drowned their three kids in the lake so that they would right. be living dolls and they'll always be you know the young um, uh, kids and they can just dress them up mm-hmm. and sit them at the dinner table. I think that's a, a much creepier, darker thing. It's like. You will yeah. always be the way I want you to be because I want my family this way. So I will kill you so we can have you – know, I can always have the family I have right now forever, that, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the in the book it was a young boy rather than a young girl who killed and brought back to life. Um, wow. What do you guys think of the cat in this movie? The cat, <laughs> really, the cat wasn't evil enough in my opinion. The cat – Cat oh, acted no. like a normal cat yeah. who's kind of pissed off. Yeah. And... <laughs> my, normal cats scratch and hiss on a daily basis. I recently got yes. a cat. If you take a look at Sheepover's hands, no. they are completely <laughs> covered. Her entire hand is covered in fucking scratches yeah. from her playing with the cat. That's playing. Right. Oh, yeah. dude, that cat is pure evil. That cat lured the girl into the street so it would get run over, man. He was just it's walking a good-looking it. evil cat, but it doesn't behave evil enough. For me, well, it, no. it does. It's just smart evil. It just doesn't scratch because that doesn't matter. What it, what matters is that it got the girl killed. The cat in Captain Marvel was more evil because it clawed a man's eye out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we need this cat to be an evil demon. The cat needs to get onto the dad's uh, MacBook, go onto his Facebook, post like "I'm gay, lol" as a status. Like, <laughs> we needed this cat doing sh- more shit than hissing and like walking away. Boring, lame no, cat. The cat downloads porn, like weird porn. <laughs> One, the two, cat uh, downloads child porn on the dad's computer. Yeah. <laughs> and then emails Holy it to the shit. mom and says, hey, take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Man, bad cat, is, bad. 
<laughs> you guys the, the cat I... typing on the keyboard. That just do that. Yeah, keyboard, keyboard cat. Ah, oh, Jinx. Jinx. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> ah, pinch you bump. You owe me a coke. coke. Oh, Jinx. Ah, neither one no, of you can talk. No! Neither one of you can talk until I say your name. That's right. Oh, Welcome God. back to the Monkey Jones Kino Show. Nobody else. No other co-hosts. It's just me. Uh, ah, uh, no, I'm bored. Oh, okay. No. Uh, Florian and the rich guys can talk again. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank God. Were you holding That's your breath painful. while waiting? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's just not being able to talk sucks. <laughs> Anyways, I gotta say, I didn't actually hate this movie. I, I know there isn't much in it, but I, I guess I still liked it in a way. And I even liked the ending, even though it was really abrupt. I thought it what was is, all right. What is John Lithgow's game in this movie? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Why does he tell them about this fucking pet cemetery? Hey, for, first of all, John Lithgow, <laughs> aka Lord Farquaad, I believe. Yeah, yeah, uh, he, is. He, he plays the old man neighbor who introduces Jason Clark to the pet cemetery. Because right. is, it, is it implied that he once brought his own wife back with it and then had her killed, or was it yeah. just his old dog? It's. It, I think he brought his wife, or maybe that was in the book or the movie. Like mm. he, he did bring his son back, or his. I don't know. Well, okay. he brought his, his dog wife. Back, his wife. He, he may have brought his his wife back as well. I think he mm -hmm. he definitely killed his wife, but I don't know if if he did that before or after she she was resurrected or I, if I she think, ever I was think resurrected. He's... I think he's a good boy who didn't do nothing, so he probably killed her after she was resurrected and all mm -hmm. evil. Which does beg the question: Why did he think it would be different to yeah, uh, right. to bring back this guy's cat? I think he says that. Like, <laughs> I think it'd be different because like it's sooner or something. But like, why? Why well, try? Like, what? What do you have to gain? Well, the the well, reasoning it, in the it's movie is that his wife was just evil, and bringing mm. her back made her more evil. I'll say this: um, I liked the performance John Lithgow gave, but let's evaluate the character's motivations. In a great scene that harkened back to the, the rock biter, a never-ending story, who felt so, so <laughs> guilty that he couldn't save his friends from the nothing, uh, John Lithgow gives a very similar performance in this scene where he says, you know, your daughter, man, I just... I loved her so much. She was so sweet. She, she, I didn't want to see her sad. So that's why I told you to bring your cat back alive with the pet cemetery. What was I thinking? I'm so stupid. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, you are pretty fucking stupid. Cause you know that bringing the cat back is not going to make her happy. Cause the cat's going to be an evil little shit. Just like what happened to you. Why do you think it's going to be different? Right. What do you, what was your thinking? Why did you spy them a new fucking cat? What are you doing? Yeah. I don't know. First, he complained the cat's not evil enough. Now he's saying it's evil. He should have never been brought back. I don't know, man. No, but Sending even telling anybody about this is too. like is like unnecessarily like tempting them, threatening like... the universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just been too long since he's seen a good resurrection. What, what can you say? So, are those kids are th those kids who were walking through the woods with the animal mass and shit? Are they going to bury their pets in the pet cemetery and then bring them back to life? Or are they, there, is there like a on Earth pet cemetery that they just bury their pets there and then it's not a big deal? Because like, what the fuck are the masks for then? Like, <laughs> what's, what's the fucking thing? I think it's it's creepy imagery for the sake of creepy imagery, and it had nothing to do with anything in the movie. Uh huh. It was like, what was the point of the kids being all creepy, wearing animal masks, wheelbarrowing their dog? In, into the woods like okay this looks creepy but then it's never brought up again and has nothing to yeah. do with anything <laughs> yeah that was pretty mm -hmm. weird you'd think that they would have brought back pets all this time and then you'd see signs everywhere that say no zombie pets allowed or something <laughs> it might but raise no. more questions than it than it uh dessert or needs to but like maybe they should have said that like these kids brought their dog back to life and the dog was fine so like now john lithgow thinks oh it'll it'll work this time but like, if yeah, you have no reason to go dog, on it, we? well, no, you don't. When, when the daughter who has been resurrected kills John Lithgow, isn't she yeah. wearing one of those animal masks? Maybe it's implied yeah. that all of those kids are resurrected children. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's and not does her good. face does her face look like it? Uh, the the mom's sister at some point. No, it her oh, face no. was, like contorts. Her face was replaced with John Lithgow's wife's. Face uh, for that one scene. I see, I see. Yeah, okay. just right, for the scene. Right. By the way, I can't believe that they just killed the old man, and he's the only one they didn't bring back. I can't believe they didn't bring him back. That would have been great. He's not part of the Evil family. Evil John Lithgow. Yeah, yes, right. he is. He was part of the family. In the <laughs> Judd. End. He's a neighbor they just met. 
they yeah. would have brought him back he would have been one big family yeah he was so grateful he he, he got to share a meal with them it's just unfair they didn't bring him back well. all right so skunky in the chat says it's explained that the wendigo compels you to talk about the burial ground no, <laughs> which is right. absolute bullshit it's stephen stupid. king doesn't know why he just says uh a wizard did it <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you uh, this, uh, boys of the panel: Did this? Uh -huh. Did Pet Cemetery in invent the trope of the uh, the magical ancient Indian burial ground, or is it uh, is it part of the trope and well, uh, very offensive uh, and shitty writing? Was it released before <laughs> or after uh, Poltergeist? Oh, I Poltergeist. Good question. Is... I don't know how old this book is. Yeah, I have to but did Poltergeist because... even invent that, or has the ancient Indian burial ground horror trope been around for centuries? <laughs> you moved the headstones, but you didn't move the body. <laughs> <laughs> well, Florian, you're you're uh, you're well versed in Native American uh, uh, oh, lore geez. and history. Um, yeah. why, why do uh, the Native Americans have a burial ground that is so magical it can bring the dead back to life? Is that offensive to uh, Indian culture? Native American culture? <laughs> why would why would that be offensive? Because are Native there's... Americans inherently evil, or are they just angry? Yeah, stolen? it's like their spirits are evil. now. we're sort of seeing them as like a you know a, a magical breed, uh, separate from normal humanity. We we look at their <laughs> customs and their beads and their feathers, and we think, oh, they're they're shaman like. The, the these must be magical wizards <laughs> well, who have the power. It's true. That's uh. That's one of the negative stereotypes against the, the native people of America is that they're they're yeah, but, other. They're but, so other. They're so weird with their culture. Why can't they just be normal and shoot guns like us? But that doesn't make sense because they are they they're obviously magical because of all the the genocide. Obviously, that's what gives them the powers. Uh, they needed it to repopulate. <laughs> Guys, yeah, I think it, the Shining uses this too. I think the reason why the Overlook Hotel is so haunted too. Is also because it's Indian burial ground. Oh my <laughs> fucking god! Yeah, yeah, that that thing had a million reasons, and all of them were completely random, and you couldn't tell what the fuck was going on. There's still people trying to figure out what the fuck is going on in The Shining, and no one knows. So is Stephen King just a hack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. You can't be the most popular <laughs> author of all time without also being a hack. You can't release <laughs> a new book every year without half of them having ancient Indian burial grounds. <laughs> Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. What's up with that black guy, by the way, who died and then he haunts him? Why does he haunt him? Why is everyone haunted for no reason? Well, I guess that's just the magic, isn't it? How convenient. We're just in a town where everyone's haunted. Oh, that sure makes for a scary movie, doesn't it? Yeah, so, <laughs> so he has a patient who was hit by, I assume, one of these trucks. And I guess, what's the lore behind these fucking trucks? There's these big, yeah. huge trucks that keep flying by their house from the same company, and th these trucks are killing people left and right. They they kill the black guy, they kill uh, the daughter, they kill the cat. Or I th yeah, what's up with these trucks killing everybody, E. Rich? What's the are, was this an a ancient Indian burial truck company? Uh, I believe this is a sequel to Maximum Overdrive, where all the trucks come back to life and start killing the humans. So <laughs> wow. this is all part of the Stephen King universe. Also a prequel uh, so to Cars go. when when <laughs> Cars rule the land. <laughs> There are no humans left. Yeah, wow. they, they suddenly become happy and they, they, they forget the murderous instincts. They just become happy little cars that drive in circles. Well, if all the humans are dead, is there any reason to be upset? Good question. Yeah, no, there isn't. It's perfect. Wow. And yeah, forget um, the Disney no, no. theory. It's just the Disney and King theory now. There's Guys, there's one very good reason that I did not like this movie because it ends with a cover of the Pet Cemetery song uh, originally done by the Ramones. And that is one of the worst Ramon songs. Ooh. And it's been stuck in my head on loop for the last two fucking days. So <laughs> oh, fuck this movie. Good. Fuck that song. Fuck the original movie. Fuck everything about it. Well, thank God I always rush out of the theater as soon as I see credits so I don't oh, have to good. hear these songs. Good. And so people don't realize that you snuck in there without having a card, huh? <laughs> Does, uh, was there a Wait. mid or post credit scene to Pet Cemetery? I, I, didn't, I didn't see one. I didn't. I didn't stick around to, to see. Uh, what would it be oh, them maybe, killing their son? Yeah, maybe it was just a dinner <laughs> scene with with everyone being a zombie now. That would have been great. <laughs> yeah, that's best. how. That's what should have happened next. We see the final. The final <laughs> shots of the film are the the th the little girl kills the mom, and then they kill the dad. So then all three are now pet cemetery zombies. 
and they're approaching the car where the young little boy is is locked inside, and they like have gasoline, and they're clearly going about to kill him. But then it cuts to you know smash cut to credits. I mm-hmm. think there should have been another scene after that, not even post credits, just another scene like a v- Avengers uh, shawarma style, where all four of them are just sitting at the dinner table, zombie like eating, uh, I guess worms or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. And like just sitting in silence for like Eyeball. forty-five seconds. That would have been a, a much creepier ending, in my opinion. I thought. Uh, it, it ended too abruptly and uh, right. too unsatisfactorily the way it was. This movie feels cut to shit. Like, they didn't really know what order they wanted things to happen in, so it's just like, uh, I guess put it there then. All right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me that he is seeing visions of, you know, that the black guy got hit by the truck. He's, like, seeing him yeah. as a, a zombie before he even goes into the pet cemetery. So just right. the fact that he now lives on the land adjacent to this a magical place is now having an effect on his life. I don't really like that sort of thing in movies where it's just everything is explained away by magic. I like a little bit more yeah. logic. Like you can have a magical place, but the magical stuff shouldn't be happening uh-huh. before he even goes there. What the fuck? Yeah, it, it's oh, that, so that happens a lot in Stephen King stuff generally. Man, that was just so bad on so many levels. The black guy he haunts him so that he will. Tell him not to use the pet cemetery, but then he he fucking scares the shit out of him. So what's the point? Of course he's gonna. And he's also scaring the shit out of their kid. See now, yeah, the kid. Oh my god, why would he haunt the kid? That is so just stupid. Just sitting in the back of their car, just like chilling, I guess. <laughs> oh man, I wonder. Would I be scared, or would I be happy to have an undead friend? It's oh, kind of uh, as a kid that is. <laughs> I think you'd be happy to have a friend at all, Florian. Yeah, I know. A ghost friend? That sounds the great. Only, the only friend have a you... black friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow, every Austrian's oh, dream. <laughs> Finally, a friend other than corn pizza who always leaves you as soon as you digest it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, damn. And then shit it out. Florian, <laughs> if, if, you made, if you made a friend, Florian, would you be able to resist the temptation of telling them to buy another copy of Binding of Isaac? <laughs> I gotta buy more corn pizza, friend. Uh, I'll never. I'll I'll do it forever. Well, Everyone must buy it. Here's a little peek behind the the Is it Kino curtain. We have a little Discord with us three in it. And that's how we record mm-hmm. the show. Every every time we're not recording, like every day, Florian just posts in the chat links to to where we can buy <laughs> his game on Steam, and he keeps like asking us to buy right. it over and over again, saying that and he like needs every real t- retailer too. He does Best Buy. He does like. Target, he does Kmart, like all of these places. He does. Yeah, I, I finally need you to do that stream you always promised where you play the Burn of Isaac monkey. Yeah, you're uh, gonna give me a, a, a Steam key so then I could give it out to everybody so they can go buy the game while I'm streaming it for you. Oh, damn. Yeah. I guess I'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you said you already had it, anyways. Well, so it, it sounds like all three of us are are kind of uh, mediocre to negative on this movie. I thought, you know, yeah. I, as a movie, it's like, yeah, it's very average. It's not scary. It's not long enough. It wasn't enough, enough payoff. The trailer really. This is a movie you take your entire family to if they all want to watch it, <laughs> and all be like, "Ooh, that was spooky," and I'd be like, "Yeah, sure." Well, all this, right. this is an R-rated movie, Rich. Yeah, take the entire family. family. Yeah. Just just bring all your family and get them annoyed at this movie. Now, I you... don't know. I no, I feel ahead. that this I feel that this movie was good for a horror movie, but I just don't see the appeal in horror movies. I guess that's the problem. Yeah. Don't you like to be scared? <laughs> well, it's not gonna work. It's a movie. Well, I'll say if you wanna uh. if you wanna get the thrills and chills of a real horror movie, go check out Green Room people. Not Green yeah. Book, the Oscar winning film. Green Room. <laughs> it should have won an Oscar if you ask me. For for Green most Green Room thrills. is incredibly remarkable because while I was watching that movie, I could hear my heart beating. Like yeah. it was it was yeah. beating that fast and that strongly that I was like, holy shit. I am so fucking intense right now. And I think I think why it's so effective on me is that Green Room takes place 100% in reality. There are no right. supernatural elements. Like when you when the whole movie is based on magic and and Indian witchcraft, it's it's like, well, okay, that's I mean, whatever. Like it's uh, that is it, going to happen and that's what's going to Yeah, I can't yeah. relate to that in any way. It's just it's fantasy. But when I see a movie mm-hmm. like Green Room where it's just human versus human locked up in a little room in the middle of a white supremacist uh, Nazi camp, uh, right. wow. it's like, well, yeah, I could, uh, 
I could end up in this situation by accident very easily. I assume I do. I, I'll do a gig anywhere. <laughs> uh, I like it's. Surely I'll forget my phone in a room one day and end up in a horrible situation where I'm going to be killed. Uh, that's, you could I, just flash the OK <laughs> sign and they let you out though. <laughs> I'll show them yeah. any of my videos. <laughs> yeah, you just tell them I was on the kill stream and they'll love you. <laughs> they'll have no problem. On an Alex Jones, you, you got it made. You got all the, the clout with the Nazis. You'll be fine. Well, okay, so filmmakers listening at home, you want to you make a, <laughs> when you, you wanna make a movie that specifically appeals to me and Erich in terms of uh, frights and chills? Make a realistic horror movie. No more of this magic shit, Stephen King. Fuck off with your giant turtle in space. Boring, lame, <laughs> not scary. Give me human on human horror, folks. Real life, realistic fiction horror. That's my that's my lesson of the day. Yeah, I think that that works most effectively. Man, now I'm really gonna watch this green room. This green room sure sounds interesting. How yep, can it be scary movie. if it's only humans? You should go watch horror it right movie now. Movie called Green Book. Green <laughs> the horrors of uh, integration. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> a black man and a white man become friends. You won't believe the horror. Horrifying. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Don't let him touch you. Don't go in there. <laughs> That's a black church. Why did he <laughs> don't go in? So, so, Florian, you're going to go watch Green Room tonight and report back to us next episode of Is It Kino how, yes. how scared you were. All right. Although, s room. since you're from Austria, you'll probably be rooting for the Nazis, I assume. Yeah. God right. damn it. <laughs> how did you Patrick know? Stewart comes on screen and you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, Patrick Finally. Stewart plays the king Nazi in this film. It's Holy fucking shit. Kino. I need to see this right now, Jesus. You do. It's my favorite movie. <laughs> it's what, when I when I started dating Sheepover. It's one of the first movies I made us watch together. Man, I, I said if you don't like this shit, we can't be together. Damn, <laughs> it's fucking don't awesome. Give us very high standards. <laughs> Green Room is the best. Uh, okay, okay. I think uh, I guess we could say if we would recommend this movie and whether or not it's Kino. Uh, Erich, go. I would not recommend watching this movie in the theater. There's no real reason. Uh, if it comes on Redbox in a couple months uh, and you're interested from what we've talked about, yeah, sure. It's 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 fine. It's it's passable. Um, yeah. And the cat's cute. There you go. <laughs> and scary, evidently. So you, you think it would actually be okay to watch a horror movie not in the cinema? Would it not be a yeah. lot less scary? Oh, I think a horror movie is probably more effective when you're watching it alone at home in the dark rather than in a right, theater full a, of... A... Oh, dude, I I went to this movie and there was no one in the entire cinema room. Oh, wow. It was, it, it was a really wow. big room, too, and there it, it was no one there. Mm -hmm. there. There was supposed to be two more people there, but I, I guess I saw them once and then they disappeared. Where did they go? It was real spooky, man. So when you're all alone in a theater, like at, at, at the cinema, as you would say, do you uh, would, do you ever like start talking out loud or like pull out your dick or anything just for fun? <laughs> oh yeah, I finally get to do whatever I want. Because <laughs> well, it's like you're all alone in a in a movie theater. Why not like just pull out your dick for the movie? Doesn't Go wild, You don't even man. have to get hard. Just like have your dick hanging out. Yeah, man. <laughs> sure, maybe. <laughs> just, just hang loose, baby. Oh, get that dick out. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can't even stop it at this point. I'm it's only saying that with my dick, really. <laughs> I'm only saying that because I've installed uh, infrared cameras in every theater in Austria, waiting to get footage of Florian pulling out his dick. I guess I could just <laughs> put these hidden cameras in his apartment or in his bathroom, but no, I put them yeah. in every movie theater. A <laughs> movie theater. Wait, till well, it doesn't. Well, see, is, I I rarely ever leave my apartment, so you would never have made it there. But yeah, that makes sense. That's the perfect plan. Yeah, I, I have to trick you into leaving your apartment for two hours so I can install the cameras, like in Death Note. <laughs> Jeez, your favorite movie of all time. No, you know, you know what was scarier than this entire movie, guys? Death Note. Walking out of the theater, looking down on the ground, and seeing a, a whole fish just on the <laughs> ground. In the theater. What? No, oh, not what? outside of the theater. Like, I walk out into the parking lot right in front of me. There's just a fish on the ground. Was it like in Fargo season one when it started raining fish? <laughs> no, it, it wasn't raining fish, but it's um, it's possible there was a water spout and it uh, got there, but I think it was gutted partially. 
but oh yeah, of course. So weird. We're having <laughs> um, fish. we're having some slight Discord connection issues, so we should wrap it up mm -hmm. soon. Florian, would you recommend Pet Cemetery? Uh, I guess not. Damn. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I'll say not even Redbox. If it comes out on Netflix and you can watch it. I guess essentially for free since you already paid for yeah. Netflix. Uh, then maybe if you're really bored, I don't know if the original is better. It probably is. I mean, I, I like Jason Clark in this. I like uh, Lord Farquaad in this, but the movie didn't do much for me. Right. So. So you're really saying that this old guy was Lord Farquaad? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Unbelievable. How old was he when he played that role? 20 years younger, I guess. <laughs> yeah, pro probably about 18 years younger than he is now. <laughs> Holy shit. I, don't know, I still mm -hmm. find it hard to believe. All right, boys, what is on the Kino schedule? What are we doing next? What's coming up? Uh, we got to do, do Watchmen do sometime Watchmen? soon. If nothing's coming out next week, let's try to do Watchmen. Although... when? Oh, I guess I don't actually know when, when Pikachu comes out here. Pikachu comes out mm -hmm. after Avengers. Oh, yeah. okay, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess you were talking about After Adventures, not before. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess okay. let's do Watchmen. Maybe we'll do Watchmen next if nothing else is coming out. But for Izakino, I have been... Hellboy! Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, I have... it looks so generic. I have been Monkey Jones! I don't want to be buried in a pet cemetery. Yep, I'm Florian. Weird. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Okay. Okay, we did it. We did two full episodes of Kino. Wow. Yeah, I'm so proud of us. We, we should have turned out. We put up with your mic quality the entire time as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to do? What indeed? I'll, uh, I guess in the future, I'll just keep recording uh, with two microphones. Uh, that can't be the solution. Let's just use Google Hangouts. <laughs> no, it it is. Uh, I've had to do that in the past before. I I didn't realize it was still know, fucking up. But it's still <laughs> it would be still easy to just use Google Hangouts, wouldn't it? Uh maybe I don't know. But everybody listening at home, thanks for tuning in for I guess almost two full hours of Kino action. I I hope you had a good uh, time. But I'm wait, that couldn't have been two hours, could it? We've been streaming for about two hours. Yeah. Wow. But uh, I'm ready to go eat some lunch. So I don't know about you boys, but I think we're going to get the fuck out of here. Oh, I'm so fucking tired. Damn. Wait, what time is it? It's, uh, it's, noon. it's almost How three o'clock. That's a bad time to be tired. Well. Oh, well, I guess you're going to go work or something. No, wait, it's Sunday. I'm going to go I'm eat. 5 a.m. to work, you fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, you do have to work. Damn. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.